Assalamualaikum and good day everyone. Nahmaduhu wa nusalli ala rasulihil kareem. Amma ba'du rabbi shrahli sadri wa yasirli amri wa ahlul uqdatam lisan yabkahu kawli. Allahumma alkhimna ma rajida umurina wa aizna min shururi anfusina min sayyati amalina. Alright, today we are going to discuss about qualitative research design. Okay. Uh, what will be the learning outcome? The learning outcome of this session is that after completing this session, you should be able to discuss the need why we have to do qualitative research. Discuss the need to conduct qualitative research. And uh, you have to also be able dis to discuss what are the requirements to become a qualitative researcher. And you have to be able to explain the differences of five different types of inquiry in qualitative research okay so uh, the slides that i have prepared for this uh, discussion is based on this textbook uh, from john w craswell uh, qualitative inquiry and research design choosing among five approaches so we are going to discuss five different approaches uh, to qualitative research all right before we go further let's uh, go through what blummer had said about this uh, something to do something to do with qualitative research so this is actually the premise uh, why there is a need to have a different approach to doing research of research we already understood that um, many of our uh, social science researcher they were sort of being influenced by uh, research uh, done in the uh, science science res by science researcher in other words uh, the approach taken by science uh, hard science researcher had influenced the way social scientists management researcher had done uh, their research uh, so they tend to adopt quantitative uh, research and because of that there is a there is a need to come up with a different way of doing research and this uh, type of research is called qualitative research which is actually uh, contradict to the way quantitative research is being done so the premise of this qualitative research is that uh, uh, human beings as we all know act toward things on the basis of the meanings that things that they have Okay, the meanings that they have in their mind through the experience, uh, through the knowledge that they have gathered. So, how do they see things, and how do they actually perceive that, and 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 what what do these things? Eh? What is the meaning of these things to them? So, this is actually uh, the reason why they act and behave in a certain way. The second is that the meaning of such things is derived from or arises out of the social interaction that one has with one's fellow. So the interaction that you have with your colleagues, with your parents, with your family members, with your, uh, with your friends, all these actually create meanings. The third premise is that these meanings are handled and modified through an interpretive process used by the person in dealing with the things he encounters. So the experience uh, that we had on certain thing will change, will evolve, you know, as we pass through time, you know, uh, more experiences we gather, add on with the experience that we already had, and that will change the way we see things. That the, that will also change the meaning that we have upon certain things. Okay, so this is actually the premise that derive qualitative research. Okay, so qualitative research begins with an assumption, a worldview, okay, worldview, uh, or a paradigm, or a philosophy. Uh, before this, I've mentioned there are interpretivism paradigm, positivism paradigm, okay, but uh, according to Creswell, this paradigm, worldview, or philosophy has got several categorization, not only two, okay, so that, that, is actually the beginning uh, uh, for qualitative research. It starts with the assumption and then the possible use of theoretical lens. Okay, you will see things from a theoretical lens. Okay, possible use, not compulsory, possible use of theoretical lens. And then the third one, 
a study of research problems inquiring into the meaning individuals or group ascribed to a social or human problem meaning individual so meaning to say that this qualitative research will definitely involve human being okay it involves human being because it relates to the meaning individual or groups ascribed to social or human problem okay it's not about machine not working it's not about this machine is not very effective the output produced by that system is not very user friendly it's not about that it's about human meaning ascribed uh, to social or human problem okay now the study of a, a, a problem to study a problem qualitative researchers need to use an emerging qualitative approach to inquiry okay emerging qualitative qualitative approach to inquiry there are five we will be discussing in our subsequent uh, slides and then we will be collecting data in natural setting okay if you remember in my previous lecture i did mention about contrived setting natural natural setting uh, contrived setting normally is an artificial setting but in qualitative research when we do research is always in a natural setting so we are not going to actually develop or set up an, an experimental experiment lab you know it's a natural setting you know in the workplace in the home in the places where they are living and uh, analyze data that is inductive and establishes patterns or themes okay inductive in quantitative it is deductive but in qualitative it is inductive okay so this pattern will slowly develop as we collect data analyze data collect data analyze data Okay, so slowly, gradually, the patterns uh, or themes eh, will evolve uh, from the analysis of the data that we collect either through interview, observation, or from document analysis. Okay, uh, we will come up with patterns or themes. We will end up by developing, you know, a theory, pro probably a theory, a framework, a model. Okay. All right, so the final written report or presentation of a qualitative research entails the following, the voices of participant, participant whom you interview. So you will, you will interview them, so their, their responses will be recorded in the report. Some of their responses will be used you know, uh, to support the themes uh, that we will be presenting in our framework, in the final framework. And then the reflexive, reflexivity of the researcher, you as a researcher who are involved in the research, okay, will contain your reflexive, reflexivity. And a complex description, in-depth description and interpretation of the problem and extension of the literature that signal, signals a call for action. Okay, so from the findings that we obtain, okay, what is the action that need to be undertaken after that what is the action that need to be uh, undertaken as a result from the research that uh, the findings of the research uh, that we have um, discovered okay now uh, qualitative research a natural setting it has to be done in a natural setting not artificial setting so you will see observe the people in their workplace in their homes okay and uh, you will talk directly with these people, interview them one to one, or focus group one to many. Okay, observe their behavior, their action. Okay, in the context, in the context, in the place, in the workplace. So it has to be done in a natural setting. So for qualitative research, you are as an instrument. If you look at quantitative research, such as survey, uh, you can uh, develop. A question air online question air you email the question air you do not have to have direct interaction with the respondent so the instrument will become uh, a tool for collecting the data and you don't have to have a direct contact with them except you send email to them okay but for qualitative research it's best you have to have a direct contact with them okay because uh, you are not going to you are not going only to listen to the voice, to the responses given by the participant, but you are going to also look at their facial expression. You are going to look at their, their body language, 
okay you are going to look at the surrounding the context the environment the people that are attached to the participants okay the artifacts that are connected to the participants in the workplace so all these need to be included in the in the research and you can only you can only experience this when you yourself go to the field and you yourself collect the data okay and when you collect data of course interviewing interviewing will be the main main uh, instrument for collecting the data and you will be using what we call a protocol that is a set of uh, instrument used as a guideline for you to do the interviewing uh, interview session and qualitative research will involve multiple sources of, the, of data okay uh, interviewing is not enough you have to couple with other sources of data such as observation okay document review okay uh, then you have to sort of triangulate all this data or this data you have to complement each other so that's why qualitative research will require you to collect multiple source of data because at the end of the day you need to have a huge enormous amount of data so that you can analyze and as opposed to quantitative qualitative research is meant to provide in-depth rich description and this is only possible when you collect data from multiple sources and um, in qualitative data analysis uh, it is inductive data analysis that means the pattern or the themes will emerge as you analyze the data so it is like bottom up okay slowly gradually the themes will emerge from the huge amount of data you do the analysis so the theme will actually end up to you developing a theoretical framework or theoretical model okay unlike in quantitative you already develop the theoretical framework or the research model and then for each uh, variables in the research model you already develop you will be developing what we call items or elements for you to measure the variable so qualitative will be the opposite of what you are doing in quantitative so here you will you look into the data you analyze slowly and then you will try to 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 group them and then connect them and then from there you will you will identify what would be the appropriate theme or category to represent that bunch of responses given by the participants of the research so this is what we call inductive data analysis qualitative research uh, concern or focus on participants meaning so we focus on the learning on learning the meaning the participants hold about the problem or issue what is the meaning that they hold upon certain issue or problem so not the meaning that we researcher bring to the research or writers from the literature so what 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 are their viewpoints what are their opinions what are their experiences all this is what we call the meaning uh, attached to the problem so that we want to really learn from qualitative research and qualitative research we are talking about the emergent design in other words our research design plan that we develop which is called the preliminary design plan will not be will not be closely followed in, instead as we progress in the research this plan or research design will sort of change okay according to the need and circumstances you know uh, every time when you collect data you have to come back and analyze right away unlike in quantitative where you distribute the question air and then once you have got enough sample then you can start analyzing uh, the data so you have to complete the data analysis then only you will proceed to the uh, sorry you have to first complete the, the the data collection then only you will proceed to the data analysis but in qualitative research is not like that in qualitative research as you collect the data after each and every interview you will analyze the data you will analyze the data and then you will proceed to the next data collection analyze again proceed to the next data collection analyze again so it is what we call emerging design okay uh, in qualitative research okay 
some study will require you to adopt certain theory as a theoretical lens. Okay, uh, so this theory will act as a lens for you to view the study, uh, such as the concept of culture uh, in ethnography study. Okay, so a theoretical lens is quite possible, but not all. If you are using grounded theory research, that is one, one methodology in qualitative research, normally you will not have to use any theory as a lens. Okay, uh, you, will, you, will, you, will, you will go to the field, collect the data, analyze, and from there, the theory will start to emerge slowly and gradually. So qualitative research is interpretive inquiry. So researchers make an interpretation of what they see, they hear and understand which cannot be separated from their own background, history, context and prior understanding. To some extent, uh, our experiences also will play a role eh, in our interpretation of uh, our data that, our that we collect in qualitative research. All right, uh, qualitative research is about holistic account. It means that we are going to develop a complex picture of the problem or issue under study, which involves reporting mul multiple, multiple perspectives. That's why we have to collect from multiple sources, multiple participants. And then we will identify the many factors involved in the situation and generally sex, sketching the larger picture that emerged. So in the end, you will come up with a model with a framework or with a theoretical model that will represent the phenomenon that you study. So uh, qualitative research is used when we need a complex, detailed understanding of the issue. In depth, in depth, a detailed okay, understanding about the issue. So the word understanding is very common in qualitative research, understanding meaning and also complex details. So these are the common vocabulary that you will come across in qualitative research. We want to empower individuals to share their stories. Uh, to, we want to hear their voices and minimize the power relationship that often exists between a researcher and participants. Uh, just like in quantitative research survey especially, sometimes you don't even have any contact with the researcher at all. You don't know who uh, uh, actually uh, de develop that research and you do not know the participant, you as a researcher, you yourself also didn't have the opportunity to look into the, the face of the uh, uh, respondent who answered your question. So there is a power of relationship. Whereas in, in qualitative research, that can be minimized because you have to have a direct contact with the, with the participant. You have to interview them. You have to you have to do a lot of probing, okay, follow-up question, follow-up question based on the answers, uh, responses that they give. You create another question, ask more questions, ask more questions. So that will actually reduce, okay, the power relationship between you as a researcher and the participant, okay, of who, who are actually being interviewed in the study. And qualitative research, we want to write in a literary, flexible style that conveys stories. Uh, or theatre, poems, without the restriction of formal academic structure of writing. Okay, we want to convey stories, uh, stories that uh, is uh, impressive to be, to be read. Okay, and qualitative research is also suitable when we want to do a follow up of quantitative research. Say, if you if you have done a quantitative research, you have come up with your framework, you collect enough data, you analyze the data, you either refute or support hypothesis, and then you want to follow up, okay, why is this hypothesis not supported? Why is it sub hypothesis are supported? So you want to, to want to know more the results of this quantitative research, then possibly you can do qualitative research. And uh, this is the most common one, especially when you are, do, you are doing qual, uh, grounded theory, is that you want to develop theories because the existing one is not enough. The existing one is inadequate or there isn't any theory that is suitable to actually represent the phenomenon that you want to study. So because of that reason, qualitative research is, of course, the only option that you have to develop the theory. Uh, Sometimes, in certain circumstances, you cannot uh, do 
uh, quantitative research because in quantitative research uh, you will collect quantitative data that is measurable statistically but under certain circumstances uh, this the, the the problem the issues or the phenomenon that you study it is it is almost impossible for you to to collect uh, quantitative data so if that's the case of course qualitative research is the only choice uh, if you look at like uh, if you want to study what do people tweet you know twitter okay what are the uh, what are the things that people tweets okay you can see obviously people tweets all all of their tweeting are in the form of sentences okay not in numbers in sentences so this this type of data cannot be measured or analyzed statistically it can be only analyzed okay uh, using a qualitative approach okay what are the requirements to become a qualitative researcher uh, one 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 of the most crucial requirement is that you are willing to commit to extensive time in the field because you need to meet with the participant as 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 many as possible in other words until you reach a, a saturation point or rich description so in other words you are going to spend a long hours in the field interviewing them talking to them so your 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 social skills need to be strong okay if your social skill is not that very strong probably you may consider uh, choosing another research uh, approach which is quantitative and you must be willing to engage in the complex time-consuming process of data analysis through ambitious tasks so unlike quantitative okay uh, you all your data is appearing in in numbers yeah, numerical values and the, the 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 statistical software will help you to do the data crunching analysis but in qualitative, you are you are swamped in by an enormous amount of textual data. Uh, so that analysis is apparently very time consuming because you have to go through line by line, word by word. So it requires a lot of patience. So if you are willing to commit to that type of work, then you are ready to become a qualitative researcher. If you are not willing, so no option, go for quantitative research or probably other type of research approach. And you must be able to become a competent writer. Okay, uh, A competent writer will be able to write long passages because all these evidences that you collect uh, need to be written down Okay, in a very beautiful, easily understandable piece of writing, you know, that has got shape. Uh, beautifully crafted people can see and learn and read and easily understandable and then you are willing to participate in the form of social and human science research that does not have firm guidelines okay as we mentioned earlier on okay the research design is not fixed okay it is quite flexible what you have planned will definitely change as you progress uh, in doing the research okay all right, uh, according to Creswell, uh, qualitative research can be generally divided into five, okay? One is called narrative research. Number two is called phenomenology. Number three, grounded theory. Number four, ethnography. And the last one is case study, okay? So this is a table taken from the textbook, okay? A summary of contrasting characteristics of five qualitative research uh, uh, approach okay five qualitative research approach okay let's look at the focus for narrative narrative focuses on exploring the life of an individual okay like biography autobiography a life of uh, the life of an individual uh, so that is the focus of narrative research whereas for phenomenology uh, phenomenology originates from the word phenomenon so a phenomenon that you want to study a significant phenomenon impactful phenomenon a phenomenon that have got essence for other people to really learn okay 
So you want to understand the phenomenon. So the focus is understanding the essence of the experience, people undergoing that phenomenon. So understanding. Focus of grounded theory is to develop theory. Because of because why? Because the available theory may not be appropriate to represent the phenomenon. Or whatever that are available in the literature is inadequate to represent the phenomenon. Or there isn't any theory at all to actually represent the phenomenon. So on that basis, there is a need to develop a theory that can make people to really understand the phenomenon. So that's the reason why we focus on uh, grounded theory because we want to develop theory. Ethnography, uh, it, it's, it, it originates from the word ethnic. So describing and interpreting a culture sharing group. Okay, so a group of people, okay, a group of people that shares similar culture. Okay, example, uh, say, uh, librarian, okay, academic librarian, okay, how is their work life? You want to understand their work life in a day-to-day -day basis as, as an academic librarian. Or what is the work life of a uh, information science uh, lecturer, okay? So, this lecturer is teaching information science subject they are sharing the same culture they teach similar subject they are sharing similar group of students who are taking information science program so you may want to understand uh, you want to describe and interpret their culture okay so this is a form of ethnography and then case study uh, this is very common and mostly adopted in 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 information science uh, discipline we want to develop an in-depth understanding uh, we want to develop an in-depth description and analysis of case or multiple case uh, case here can be can be an individual can be a group of people can be an event can be an occurrences okay so you want to have an understanding of a certain case or multiple case so that's when we need to do case study okay what type of problem that is best to to be adopted uh, for each and every of these five different qualitative approaches. Uh, for narrative, when we want to tell stories of individual experience, whereas for phenomenology, we want to describe the essence of a life phenomenon. Uh, example, uh, in 2004, there was a huge, massive earthquake uh, and because of the earthquake, there was uh, there was a very uh, disastrous tsunami that caused uh, the death of many people in part of Indonesia, specifically in Aceh. And uh, some of these survivors, okay, of course, they lost their family members. So those who survived, how did they go through their life post tsunami, after tsunami? So this leaf phenomenon, we want to we want to understand. How do they lead their life after that? Since the impactful event, okay, tsunami. So we want to describe the essence of a leaf phenomenon. So people who survive that, that uh, disaster, that calamity. Grounded theory, uh, we want to develop a theory. Uh, because the reason is that there isn't any suitable theory. And... The focus is based on participants who are going to involve in helping us developing the theory. Okay, because that participant is in the context where we want to study. Ethnography, describing, interpreting the shared patterns of culture or of a group. So the key word here, group of people. So they share similar culture. As I've said just now, can be the, the work life, the culture of a, an academic librarian or lecturers teaching information science subjects. Okay, so they share same pattern of culture. So we want to describe, okay, and we want to have an in-depth understanding about their work life. So this is where we need to use ethnography. Case study, providing an in-depth understanding of a case or multiple cases. Okay, uh, this case can be 
example knowledge sharing okay knowledge sharing among librarians in an academic library so we want to conduct a case study how do knowledge sharing takes place uh, what what are the technology being used how often do they engage in uh, discussion okay what are the medium they adopt in sharing their knowledge okay so this is an example where case study is suitable okay uh, the discipline and background uh, varies narrative research you can see uh, it, 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 it originates from the history, psychology, sociology, including anthropology. Uh, as for phenomenology, it originates from the uh, philosophy, psychology and education. Grounded theory mainly from so, 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 sociology. Uh, ethnography, anthropology and sociology and case study. Uh, are drawn from psychology, law, political science, and medicine. Uh, okay, uh, unit of analysis, just like in any other type of study, including including uh, uh, quantitative research, you already learned that there must be a unit of analysis, right? So for qualitative research, you have to also define the unit of analysis. Who or what actually do you want to study? So, for narrative research, the unit of analysis studying one or more individuals. Okay, example, you want to study uh, about our former Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahade, or you want to study the life of uh, Tun Abdullah Badawi. Okay, uh, so these are people who is uh, who has a lot of influence, right? So, uh, you study that particular individual. So. It is what we call narrative research. Phenomenology, you studying several individuals that have shared experience through certain phenomenon. Okay, like the example I mentioned just now, those who survive uh, uh, post tsunami. So these people may share some experiences. So you want to study them. Okay, so the unit of analysis, individual, still individual. Grounded theory, uh, this one, you will study a process or action or interaction involving many individuals. So the unit of analysis can be a process, can be interaction involving many individuals, still individual, still individual. Ethnography, uh, this one you study group, you study group, okay? Uh, of course, in order to study group, you have to also go through one by one, right? You have to go through each member of the group. But the essence here is that ethnography, as I've said, it comes from the word ethnic. You have to study a group, a race. Okay, but here not necessarily a race. Basically, people who share same culture, different culture, in the similar back background context. So, people who share the same culture, same thing. So, you can study them. So, the unit of analysis are... The unit of analysis is actually group. And then case study, uh, this has got to do with the case. So you may study an event. So the unit of analysis can be an event, an occurrence, a program, a process, an activity. Or you can study individual or a group of people. So possible okay, to be done using case study approach. Okay, how do you do data collection for all these types of qualitative research okay so data collection three mainly use technique for data collection in qualitative you you will of course use interview interview can be one-to-one -one or one-to-many and one-to-many sometimes they call it focus group you will definitely use observation you have to go to the field observe you know the phenomenon observe uh, the people in the context and the third one will be document review. Not necessarily document, it can be any form of artifact that is related to the people. Okay, it can be an object, it can be a piece of writing, it can be a photo, it can be a voice recording, it can be a video. Any form of artifact, any form of evidence that is attached to the uh, people, to the individual, okay, you have to review them. Okay, so these three forms of data collections are very dominant in qualitative research. In fact, you have to use all these three forms of um, data collection. How do you do data analysis? 
Okay, data analysis, okay, across these five different types of qualitative research, very common is that you have to analyze the data after each and every time you interview or have collected data. And then you can do a lot. There are different strategies for analyzing the data and different terms are being used. Some call it uh, thematic analysis and some will, would use this uh, content analysis. Okay, so basically the responses that you obtain, you have to transcribe and then you have to analyze. Okay, so it's up to you. You may be using what we call content analysis. You may be using what we call thematic analysis. But the terms being used across these different types of research may, may differ. Example, in grounded theory, you will come across the word open coding, axial coding, selective coding. So this is a specific term that is exclusive for grounded theory. You will not be seeing these terms appearing in narrative research or in ethnography research. Okay, so but this term is almost uh, compulsory to be used. Okay, open coding, axial coding, selective coding. But the essence of this data analysis across these three or five different uh, qualitative research is more or less the same. Okay. Okay, the report that you will be writing uh, for narrative research, you will develop a narrative about the stories of an individual's life. For phenomenology, you will describe the essence of the experience of that phenomenon. Grounded theory, you will develop a theory coupled with the narration okay, of the theory, you know, illustration, model, okay, with description of the model. Ethnography, a description about the culture, sharing groups, okay? And uh, for case study, you will develop a detailed analysis of one or more cases. Okay, uh, the reporting structure uh, varies for narrative, okay? You can see on the slide, we have introduction, research procedure, report of stories, individuals, Theorize about their lives, narrative segment, identified pattern of meaning, identified the event, the processes, the epiphanies, theme, summary. Uh, this is based on Denzin, 1989. Whereas for phenomenology, more or less the same, more or less the same, only the heading slightly different. Uh, what uh, Creswell had shared is based on the work of uh, Mustakas, 1994. Okay, you can see the word there, significant statement. Because uh, the phenomenology comes uh, from the word phenomenon. So, it, there must be a very impactful phenomenon or something that is very significant. Very significant. That's why we have to have a significant statement that actually relate to that phenomenon. phenomenon. Okay, grounded theory. Uh, as I've said, uh, these terms are uh, open coding, axial coding, selective coding, exclusive for this grounded theory. So in your writing, you have to actually show them explicitly. Okay. Uh, Creswell had taken this from the work of Strauss on Corbin, 1990. Ethnography, uh, the introduction, research procedures, how do you do data collection, data analysis, what are the outcome of the analysis, Okay, and then you describe the culture, analysis of the cultural theme, and finally, interpretation and lesson learned. Lesson learned. Okay, and um, well, we talk about lesson learned, it is quite apparent um, across all these five qualitative research. Of course, to some extent, not only exclusive to ethnography, other form of qualitative research also will have some form of lesson learned. Only the degree will vary. Okay. Uh, case study. Okay. Uh, the keyword in case study normally you have this triangulation and also you have this boundary. You have to define the boundary. So the scope, okay, the boundary. Description of the case, uh, multiple cases, development of issues, detail about selected selected issues, assertion, and closing the vignette. Okay. This is taken from stake 1995. All right, writing the problem statement for the qualitative research. So, not, not only qualitative research, for any given research, be it quantitative or qualitative, you have to have a research problem. 
So research problem is actually the intent of what you want to do. So why is this study needed? That, that is the question that you are addressing. Okay, so this is the general guideline for you, right? For you to write the problem statement. You have the general problem that you have already observed. And then you will focus on the specific problem. Okay, when you write, you have to have an introductory words describing the paradigm. Okay, whether it's going to be quantitative, qualitative, mixed method. Okay, and then which which uh, design approach are you going to adopt? Is it going to be case study, ethnography, a phenomenology? Okay, and then general population affected by the problem identified. Point number five, the geographic area where the problem existed is identified and then the gap in the literature what has not been done to address what you intend to study okay what existing literature fail to to look into or what have not been done so that is the gap okay so the gap in the literature is not sufficient reason to conduct a doctoral study and is not in itself a problem but it explains where your study feel fit with other scholarly research Okay, uh, point number seven is more of more of a formatting. Okay, uh, point number eight, sufficient evidence to convince that the problem is really a genuine, real, uh, solvable and significant. And last but not least, the problem statement must be clear, concise and in accord with the purpose statement. Okay, the purpose statement has got several components. First, you have to identify the specific qualitative research approach. Okay, we have mentioned just now, based on Cresswell, there are five. Okay, are you going to use narrative study or phenomenology or grounded theory or ethnography or the last one, case study. So you have to identify the specific qualitative approach and then you have to encode the passage with words that is suitable to the chosen uh, qualitative approach okay if you use uh, this type of approach there is a certain word that you should be using uh, if you use case study for instance there are certain words that suitable to be included in the uh, writing of your purpose statement and then number three identify the central phenomenon the central concept that you intend to explore or examine the last point that must be included in the problem in the purpose statement is the foreshadow the participant and the site for the study. Where is where is the context, the geographic area, the people? Remember in the problem statement you already mentioned, but in the purpose statement that also needs to be included. This is the template prepared by uh, Craswell to assist us in writing our purpose statement. Okay, you just have to fill up the blank. Okay, the purpose of this, so choose out of the five, uh, is or will be to understand, describe, develop, discover, and then fill up the blank. Central phenomenon of the study for who are the participants at this stage in the research, what will be generally defined as what. So, if you look at the purpose statement, you provide the definition of the phenomenon that you intend to explore or examine. Okay, these are the, if you remember the last slide, we mentioned there are four points need to be uh, included in your purpose statement. So, point number two there, okay, encode with suitable words. Okay, here are a list of suitable words that uh, Craswell had prepared for us. If you use narrative, okay, you need to include the words narrative study, uh, leaf experiences, chronology. As for phenomenology, the suitable words to be encoded in the purpose statement would be like phenomenology itself, describe experiences, meaning, essence, grounded theory, the word grounded theory itself, and then the word generate, develop, proposition, process, substantive theory, ethnography, ethnography, the word ethnography itself, culture sharing, cultural behavior, cultural portrait, Okay, cultural themes, huh? all the word culture must appear in the ethnography. And last but not least will be the case study. The appropriate terms to be included would be the case study word itself, bounded. That will be the boundary. Okay, and then single or collective cases, event, process, program, individual. Okay, 
uh, that can be used you know in the writing of your purpose statement for case study okay uh, in qualitative research normally you have a central question followed up by uh, sub questions okay central question will be the main research questions and then uh, sub questions uh, will be the the, the 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 additional questions derived from the central research question so uh, the sub questions can be categorized into the first one issue uh, sub questions which divide the central phenomenon into subtopics of study and the other one is procedural sub questions which convey the steps in the research within an approach okay let's look at this example okay the central research question what was the campus response to the gunman incident at the midwestern university that is the research question so issues sub questions issues this one related to the main issue what happened okay who was involved in responsible or in response to the incidents what themes of response emerged during the eight month period that followed this incident what theoretical construct helped us understand the campus response what construct were unique to this case okay these are sub questions related to the central issue that is the uh, gunman incident whereas for procedural uh, sub questions okay how might the campus and the events following the incidents be described okay procedural what themes emerge from gathering information about the case how would i interpret these themes with uh, within larger social and psychological theories okay these are the guidelines given by Cresswell. but if you look at um different textbook uh, on qualitative research uh, you don't you do not have to necessarily have this procedural or uh, issue sub questions not necessary some some research i come across they they had like three research questions okay two research questions some even have one central research question without having any sub questions okay Okay, uh, as for the data collection, uh, I will have a different video or different lecture on that because this data collection is not only meant for qualitative study, uh, the interviews, observation, document, sometimes are also applicable for quantitative research. So for data collection that are normally being used for qualitative study would be interviews, uh, which is the dominant one, then observation, document or artifact review okay artifact review uh, please check on my other presentation or lecture on this data collection later okay now for the data collection is not like uh, a linear fashion in quantitative research in quantitative one stage is done or one activity is completed then you move on to another stage or activity so it it, it is in a linear fashion but in uh, qualitative it can be cyclical iterative okay and you can see uh, from the slide locating site or individual and then you get the permission the green light to gain access and making rapport with the people and then you do purposive sampling okay in terms of sampling and population also i have a different video or lecture on that uh, please refer later on okay normally you will definitely be using purposive sampling and then uh, you will do data collection, interviewing, or observation, or document review, and then you will do the recording of that information. And then you have to resolve certain issues in the field, storing the data, analyzing the data. Okay, this is about data collection, not analyzing yet. Eh? So you have to store the data. Once you have already collected, you have to analyze, of course. Okay data activity for the uh, that uh, that are related to these five approaches for qualitative study okay um, for narrative study uh, it involves single individual so you must make sure this individual is willing to commit with your study and the, the he or she is willing to be interviewed multiple times Phenomenology, multiple times of interviewing individuals, okay, having the same experience 
going through the phenomenon. Grounded theory, multiple individuals will be interviewed, observed, okay? Okay, and uh, who participated in the process through a central phenomenon. Ethnography, member of a group who share similar culture of certain things. Okay, member. Of course, you will interview each and every one. So, collectively, they will become a group. Uh, case study, a bounded system such as process, an activity, an event, a multiple or multiple cases. So, you will be looking into artifact. You will be looking into system. You will be checking on document. You will be interviewing people who are directly connected to the system, to the process. Okay. What are the typical access and repo issue? Okay, for narrative, you have the person must be willing to commit, so he must agree. Same goes for phenomenology. The people whom you are going to interview, they are willing to commit. Grounded theory also, uh, the 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 homogeneous people need to be identified. Okay, and ethnography. Okay, they are also homogeneous, sharing the same culture. So you need to get access through the gatekeeper. So the, the leader, the gatekeeper, who will give you the green light? Okay, normally when the gatekeeper agrees, the member will just follow suit. And then case study, you have to get permission, gain access also through the gatekeeper, the leader, the owner of the business, whatever. Okay, how does one select a, a site or individuals to study? Several strategies depending on the person for narrative. Okay, you can call them. You may have to have a good person who can introduce you to the person. Okay. Uh, phenomenology. Uh, finding individuals who have experienced the phenomenon. Okay. Sometimes in phenomenology, there is another type of sampling called uh, snowball sampling. Uh, because sometimes it's quite difficult to identify these homogeneous people who went through the same... Um, event or phenomenon so one guy who had the experience may lead you to another guy or another person okay grounded theory okay finding homogeneous sample okay we call it theoretical sampling ethnography uh, finding a cultural group to which one is a stranger a representative sample uh, through the gatekeeper of course okay and case study finding a case all cases uh, this is the the difficult part what type of information that you will be uh, collecting for narrative all forms of of information that you can come across okay it can be uh, it can be any writing about the person like a writing on the newspaper uh, in a blog in a twitter in a in a book or in a journal anything about the person you just collect you name it you collect and you analyze phenomenology interview with five to 25 people that is the guideline given by paul king horn but it depends you know we we do not know actually how many people survive you know going through that event if there if there are only 10 people of course they've got no choice 10 people only okay uh, if there are only five people then all the five people it, it, that is provided when the person is willing to commit even if you, let's say you say there are only five people who survived that event and you want to study that that five people unfortunately of the five uh, one already felt very sick you know uh, bad ridden couldn't do anything anymore couldn't even talk so of course you've got no choice four people only you can have you have to interview okay primarily interviews 20 to 30 people for grounded theory okay ethnography participant observation interview artifacts document case study almost the same thing okay you have to observe you have to analyze the artifact document review okay now how do you record the information nowadays we have got so many uh, technology that can assist us like uh, of course our handphone can be used to uh, tape record our interview not only our voice but our appearance through a video that also can be done so across all these five you can use this technology whatever gadget or tool that you have nowadays can be used for recording the information the common data collection issues okay across is 
for all the different types, eh, the issues is always about access and the willingness of the person to commit with different number of interviewing. Okay, and uh, in phenomenology, there's another unique issue that you have to uh, look into. That is what we call bracketing. Bracketing is a situation where you exclude your past experience, whether you yourself had gone through that event or phenomenology or phenomenon, or you may have read somewhere, so you have got some idea about that event. Okay, so that thing must be excluded from your mind. So this is what we call bracketing. Bracketing. Okay. And just now I, I missed something. Uh, in grounded theory, okay, you have to do what we call memoing. So memoing is about, you know, memo by itself is about a detailed why and how decision made related to sampling, okay, collapsing of codes, separating codes, producing, categorizing, identifying relationship. Also, so that is memoing, a thick description, having everything, okay. Uh, of course, again, same like others, interviewing uh, is an issue when people are not really willing to commit for several times, okay. Ethnography, you have to be with the group of people okay uh, divulge private information okay that's the challenge okay uh, case study almost the same interviewing and observing issues okay uh, some some uh, organization are not uh, allowing us to actually observe uh, you know all the processes that are taking place uh, in the organization because of confidential confident confidentially confidentiality issue okay so they allow you to do the study but some processes they don't really allow you to actually get access to and then how's the information typically stored nowadays you can store all of your data you know in so many medium you can even use a cloud your external hard disk okay so many medium so many options to choose from okay now uh let's go through different types of study that had used several different types of qualitative approach. Uh, I could not find any narrative study uh, from my literature search, uh, but I managed to discover a few studies uh, using phenomenology, ethnography, grounded theory, and also case study. Let's look at phenomenology one, this one. Okay, so the title of a paper of the paper is a phenomenological study exploring the leadership development experience of academic research library. Okay, you can look at this title and later on you can search uh, using Google. It is open access, easily available, accessible by anyone. Okay, it is actually a doctoral uh, thesis or dissertation. A phenomenological study exploring the leadership development experience of academic research library okay probably those of you who are interested in doing um, PhD in the field of information science probably this topic may give you some idea on what topic that you can choose or you can work on uh, using uh, phenomenology okay so this person did a PhD on this so let's look a little bit on the abstract I couldn't find the abstract okay introduction okay maybe it's up there it's only acknowledgement oh, surprisingly no abstract Okay, but uh, the essence is that the person is actually studying leadership development experience. Huh? Let's look at study number two that uses or that use phenomenology. Using phenomenology to improve information literacy curricula, planning and design. Some of you are librarians and involved in this uh, information literacy 
program uh, in your library. So probably uh, you can consider adopting phenomenology to come up with a study, okay, uh, such as this one. Okay, so these guys, okay, did a study using phenomenology, okay. So, uh, in the abstract, the author mentioned this research seeks to build on previous research uh, by highlighting the usefulness of employing phenomenological methods in receiving inputs from faculty on information literacy instruction. It also tested out a new way of conducting this sort of research through reviewing expert reaction to a conceptual framework used as a prop to more deeply explore the phenomena of information literacy. Well, this is interesting. Okay. Okay, it has got some quantitative data as well. Uh, sub teams. Okay. Okay. Here you can see in the discussion. Uh, theme one, thinking well. Theme number two, audience. Theme number three, clearer communication. So this is the conceptual map. Okay, linking the three themes that the researcher had discovered. Okay, three themes. And thinking well, and then. Team number two, audience. Team number three, clearer communication. Okay, for uh, information literacy program in a library. Okay, that's two examples of phenomenology. Let's look at ethnography. Okay, in the field of uh, information science. Okay, uh, how do I enlarge this? Okay. So the title of the paper is Personal Library Personal Library Curation and Ethnograph Ethnographic Study of Scholar Information Practices. Okay. Uh, you can go through by yourself. Okay, read through this article and probably it will shed some light on you on how to come up with an ethnography study, okay, for a library context. Another example of ethnography. Ethnography in action, active learning in academic library outreach to middle school students. Okay, in the US. So abstract. The article described an outreach activity developed and coordinated by academic librarians as part of a state program for low-income middle school students. Rather than offering a traditional library tour, the library Organizers wanted to provide the middle school students with a meaningful experience that would encourage active participation, critical thinking, and alleviate library anxiety. So the 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 group of people that this study focuses is a low income middle school student. So they share the same culture. So that's why they had used this ethnography study. Okay, grounded theory. Perceive identify, uh, sorry, perceive identity, applying grounded theories in library. Okay. okay. Please go through that by yourself. This is another example of grounded theory. Year 7 students, information literacy and transfer, grounded theory. So if you notice, information literacy quite uh, extensively researched using different types of qualitative research. The one that we just went through just now was about, uh, I think, phenomenology, right? So this one is on grounded theory. So this paper presents a critical evaluation of the advantages and limitation of grounded theory. The key findings of the study are outlined and discussed. Okay. Uh, a minority who were engaged in the, their own learning valued information literacy practices and were likely to transfer these practices. So those who engage in own learning, they value information literacy based on this finding. 
Second, a majority who would potentially be engaged in their own learning and who value information literacy in principle but were unlikely to transfer these practices without intervention by a teacher or a teacher librarian. They are not willing to share what they had learned in the information literacy class with the rest of their friends or colleagues. The third one, a very small minority who failed to grasp the concept of learning of information literacy practices and could not transfer such practices. They didn't learn much okay, from the classes. Okay, this is the finding using grounded theory. Okay. Case study research one as an example. Okay, exploring data literacy via librarian faculty learning community. So another about literacy, another one about literacy, but this one using um, case study. Okay, the article describes a case study of librarian facilitated uh, FLC. Okay, I'm not sure what is FLC. Focus on data literacy, which re which resulted in the development of a teaching toolkit, library library led data literacy instruction, and ongoing collaboration between librarians and faculty. Okay, this is interesting. The FLC structures proved to be valuable. Okay. FLC stands for Faculty Learning Communities. So the Faculty Learning Communities work hand in hand with the librarians to come up with a tool called uh, Library Led Data Literacy Instruction. Okay, this is interesting. Okay, last one as an example using case study Embedded Data Librarianship, a case study of providing data management support for science department. Okay. okay, let's go through the abstract. Okay, this case study details how a data services librarian and science librarian collaborate to provide embedded data management support for the research-oriented Department of Earth and Environmental Sciences at Rajas University, Newark. Newark, how do you pronounce that? Combining their familiarity with emerging professional practices and resources, their efforts to gain a deeper understanding of the specific data management needs of researchers in the department and their research into the evolving research data infrastructure in, the, in that particular discipline. Okay, again, something to do with um, literacy, I suppose. Uh, no, 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 this is not literacy, this is about data management. The previous one was literacy. Okay, you can see eh? now the one that I have, the, the ones that I've shared with you mostly on librarians. Why did I choose librarians? Now, uh, your program is information management mainly. So, um, uh, you can also search using keywords such as information managers, okay, uh, or data managers, knowledge managers, okay. Uh, but what I have shared with you really showed that these different types of uh, qualitative studies that we have discussed uh, were being used by researcher uh, to study topics or areas in information science discipline. Okay, uh, if you look at the definition of MQA, what is information science? It covers library science, it covers knowledge management, it covers um, uh, what it call library science knowledge management, uh, it covers um, uh, knowledge management, information management, okay? So if it is being used in library science, it can also be used in information management. Same goes for uh, in archive or uh, in um, records, okay, can be used. All right, so I hope uh, I have uh, shared something that really uh, heighten your interest uh, in research. Okay, so probably what we have learned today can be applied and used uh, in the development of your research proposal. So, probably instead of using only survey as a method for your research, you may consider using any of the five approaches that I had discussed in this video. So, I hope you had really learned something from this video and to see you in the next coming video, especially on data collection and also population and sampling. Thank you very much for your attention. Have a nice day ahead. Assalamualaikum.